Bentornati, bentornati in questo nuovissimo episodio di Keeping Up with Iaia Rondi. Oggi, come vedete, <ride> abbiamo un ospite, abbiamo un ospite. So, 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 who are you? Uh, my name is Dylan Huey and I'm your husband. <laughs> thank you, thank you. No, no, that, that, was, that was the best introduction ever. Um, yes, yeah, so he's my husband, a mio marito. So this episode is going to be in English, okay? English, because my husband doesn't speak Italian. You have something to say about this? Uh, yeah, I don't speak Italian. So where, tell them, you're going to find the YouTube video with Engl- Italian subtitles on YouTube. Uh, so you're going to find the video on YouTube uh, under Keeping Up With Yaya Randi. <laughs> yes. Uh, what else do you want me to say? And? And? Audio? With Spotify. English subtitles and uh, Spotify uh, and, um, I don't know, podcasts. Vabbè. Uh, yes, 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 yes. Right. Um, <laughs> troverete il formato audio uh, su Spotify, Apple Podcast, ma in inglese, ok? In English. Ok, we can start. So what's, what's this episode about? What, what, what is going to be about? This episode's about me. Ok, perfect. So what happened? What did we ask to, you know, like our followers? Uh, to uh, ask me some questions um, so I can, I can answer some of these questions. Perfect, perfect. Ok. <coughs> eh, ragazzi, ovviamente sono sempre la vostra host, Ilaria Rondinelli. I'm your host, Ilaria Rondinelli, and this is Dylan Huey. Perfect. Ok, first question. <laughs> I need to be serious, I'm sorry. Um, what do you think about Italy? Uh, so, what do I think about Italy? Uh, I really like Italy. Um, I had a lot of fun uh, when I went there. It's really the, uh, the only country that um, you know, I've ever been to. Uh, I've really only seen Rome, or I have only seen Rome. Uh, it was a pretty big cultural shock for me. Uh, compared to what I'm used to. Uh, I grew up in a small town, so even just uh, being in a city uh, is not something that, you know, that I'm used to. Uh, the food was really, really great. Um, Alaria's family is uh, very, very loving, and uh, that was always nice, especially eating dinner and things like that. I'd, they just keep feeding you and keep feeding you. Um, And then, you know, of course, uh, all the things that there is to see in Rome. Uh, that was really, um, really cool for me, especially being able to experience it with, uh, you know, my wife and having uh, like the best tour guide, I guess you could say. Um, <laughs> okay, yeah. okay. Um, thank you. That was <laughs> that was intense. Uh, me and Dylan didn't didn't talk about this episode, so everything is just like natural, okay? Like we he we didn't, right? Uh yeah, yeah. We didn't. <laughs> this is um, we're just going with it. We're going don't with the flow. To, don't you have to translate it? No, 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 no. How? That this is gonna be on YouTube, and I'm gonna put subtitles in Ita- in Italian, but. Spotify and Apple Podcasts, I cannot do anything about it. Oh, okay. All right, all right, all right. Thank you, thank you. So, second question. This is interesting. Mm-hmm. Are you ready? Sure. So, this is about the Navy. So, your job, your job. So, what do you think about your job? You know, you, you, you work for the Navy, you, you know, you're a sailor, you're in the military. 
Uh, do you have any fears or do you ever had difficulties, you know, about your job? If you ever found, you know, difficulties about your job? Uh, yeah, that's kind of a, that's kind of a loaded question. Um, yeah, I mean, I've definitely had difficulties with my job, you know, that can be depending on a lot of different things. Um, it could be because you're, you know, on deployment and you're just fatigued and, uh, you know, you're, you, you get kind of tired of working every day. Um, uh, there are also moments where, uh, you're under pressure, you're under a time crunch, uh, something, maybe a problem comes up, you know, and you have to take care of it uh, as soon as possible. And you have that pressure, you know, of um, getting everything done as quickly as, you know, as you can. Uh, there's, you know, there's other situations too, where uh, I, I don't really experience it so much now, but like when I was more junior, when uh, you don't really know how to do something and you're, you know, your boss tasks you with doing something, you don't know how to do it. And they pretty much so tell you to uh, figure it out, find out, find the answer on your own. Um, so you have to do research and do a lot of reading and digging, trying to find, uh, find the answer. Um, uh yeah i mean i feel like that's pretty much so it i mean what was the question fully just yeah that, that's what they asked like um Th that's what they were they wanted to know like i feel like it was more like about if there's like any curiosity about the navy you know if there's something weird about the navy um can you say something about that like um something weird about the navy yeah like uh we call it curiosità, you know, like, oh, yeah, there's something about the Navy that you have to know, you know, something like a fun fact or, you know, something like that. I don't really know. I don't understand the question or I don't. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know what to say to that. I don't know. OK, perfect. Next question. Next. I don't know something weird about the Navy. <laughs> OK, next. Next <laughs> <laughs> it's so weird like doing an episode with you but anyway oh this is this is interesting okay they want to know what do you think about the women's body in the american society that's that's the question so i i feel like they wanted to know if you if you think there's a you know you went you went to Italy you know you went to Rome and I'm your wife you know I'm Italian so do you think there's like a difference between the women's the Italian women's body and Amer American women's body um yeah I guess so um uh, I mean I think just in my experience being in Rome uh, where it's a city, people walk around a lot more. Uh, you definitely have to use your legs more uh, in a city. Uh, so I think, uh, like, a lot of the women there were skinny. Um, <laughs> okay. And just, in, I don't know, for, in my preference, I don't, it's not necessarily, like, something that I find attractive. Um, no, I I wasn't finished. Yeah, I know you're not finished, but, like, I don't want people to think that you're saying that skinny girls are not attractive. I like said in my opinion. Okay, this is your opinion. Okay, no, I just want to, you know, I just want to make sure they know this because there's a lot of, you know, I try to do a lot of body positive in my social media, you know, TikTok, Instagram, and we don't say that skinny girls, you know, are Wh you know what I mean? No. Okay, yeah. No, so just it's just in my opinion. I can have my own opinion of what I'm attracted to, uh, and then as far as I guess making that comparison with uh, American women, uh, I don't I don't really know. I feel like America is a really big country, uh, and I think that there's all types of you know bodies, and you know everyone's attracted to 
you know, whatever they're attracted to and it might not even, you know, it, it might not even necessarily really be physical. Uh, you know, I feel like you have, uh, different situations and different people and, um, you have every situation out there. Uh, I don't know. I feel like America has like a little bit of everything, um, and different people that are attracted to different things. Okay. So, so you found a big, a big difference between American and Italy or like, what do you... What do you think? Uh, are you talking about like, are we still talking about like, yeah, like people? S- still talking about body. And to be honest, um, I mean, to be honest, when I was in Italy, I, I feel like I was more like looking at buildings and, you know, the things when you were taking me out, like I wasn't like looking at people really like that. Um, what it makes me think of is, I did feel like people stared at me a lot and I know that people could tell that, um, that I was American. Um, but that was kind of weird for me, I guess, cause I, I couldn't really, I couldn't tell, you know, um, I didn't think that my, I looked that much different, you know, than the people that were there. Yeah. So I thought it was weird that everyone could tell that I was American, but I probably wouldn't have been able to tell if someone was Italian or, mm-hmm. English or you know or whatever wherever they were from there um, and I know that you definitely could uh, and then after you pointed out some American families to me like it did make sense there were some like Americans I seen where I'm like yeah I could tell but um, yeah I don't know okay <laughs> okay thank you thank you that was I guess that was enough um next next question um okay this is about your private life okay so feel free to talk about whatever you want uh don't i don't want to make you feel pressure like okay like talk about whatever you want to talk about um this is your about your childhood um before you joined the military so how was your life you know like Sometimes I talk about, you know, people are really curious about you because you, compared to me, you're a really shy person. You don't really, you're not really talkative like me, you know, like I'm an open book. Like I talk about my life. Everyone that follows me knows about my life. And, you know, I, I, it's really easy for them to be like, yeah, I know about Hilaria's life. I mean, whatever I talk about, of course, they don't know everything about my life. But you are like a, a hot topic because they want to know about you, you know? You're really shy and you have that like, you know. Mysterious. Exactly. So I I'm wait wait wait. So the question is, your life before joining the military, and what what really what does it mean living in a small town in the U.S. Like growing up in a small town in Indiana, and you know compared to a big city like New York. Hmm. So what it's like growing up in a small yeah, town. First of all. First of all, your life before joining the military. Uh, so my life before joining the military. Um, so, uh, so I always, I always wanted to join the military. Um, I tried uh, a couple of times before I actually joined. Um, uh, I think like the main reason why I didn't is because I couldn't uh, get a job that uh, that I wanted um, or that I was satisfied with. Uh, Uh, It was always something I kind of wanted to do, and uh, I tried and kind of gave up on it a couple of times before I eventually did, but um, uh, I had a couple of jobs. I used to work at a factory, um, which I actually really liked uh, just because I did more physical physical labor, physical work, which uh, I actually enjoyed um, versus now where I kind of just, I I work from a desk and uh, more or less a teacher. Uh, and teach and teach students from time to time but uh, so I had a factory job for a little while and then uh, I eventually 
moved to Indianapolis where I was doing uh, electrical work and that had its pros and cons. It was fun sometimes, but then, you know, like once winter came, uh, working outside in the cold and in the snow, uh, that was not fun. I uh, really, really hated that. Um, I mean, that was, that's kind of it, you know, after, after I did that for a while, I eventually joined the Navy. Um, so what I, what I, I know what they want to know, because I, you know, sometimes I talk about, um, the big problem in America, you know, in particular in small towns, you know, like where you grew up that, you know, there's really nothing to do and there's a there's a lot of drugs there's a lot of alcohol and it's really common in america that you know teenagers or like you know when you start growing up you start trying once in your life you know like drugs or alcohol or something um so they want to know like what do you what do you used to do before joining the military you you feel free to talk about whatever you want to talk about um so uh like i guess i can i can only speak from my experience and where i grew up and where i'm from so i can't say that it's like this everywhere or anything i'm only speaking from my experience and uh growing up where i grew up in a small in the small town that i grew up in indiana um i think it just depends on um your family you know what kind of family you grew up in how you were raised and uh because you have there are there are options you know like there are people that did really well in school and you know went on to college and got really good degrees and uh, I don't want to say like found a way out because you don't necessarily need to find a way out uh, there are plenty of plenty of people who just graduated from high school and you know um, got married you know pretty early or pretty young to whoever they had been dating and you know got a uh, steady job and they're you know they're doing really well um i think that i don't want to say that 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 there's not anything to do i think there are a lot of stuff a lot of things to do but it, it is more centered around like parties mm -hmm. or at least it was when i was growing up um that seemed to be the thing to do you know like where's the where's the party at tonight or where's the party at this weekend and um, you kind of have like your different groups of people, you know, especially when you're in high school and you have like people who are into playing sports, um, people that are uh, farmers, you know, they grew up in like a farming family or whatever. And, uh, you know, then you have, you know, people that uh, are kind of into like drugs and really partying and stuff. And uh, those people sometimes never really figure it out. They never really grow out of it, and uh, they kind of just get stuck in that path for a while. And um, unfortunately, like, you only have to get caught or get in trouble once, and you're kind of stuck there. And uh, your life has a very slim chance of, you know, having a good positive turnaround after that. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if I'm kind of, like, uh, just rambling. Um no, I basically, basically, we can say that joining the military uh, helped you out. Yeah, have to f have to like find a way out. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it did. Um, I've learned a lot of things from the military. I'm very like thankful for the military. Um, uh, I think that you know, growing up where where I'm from, people can sometimes tend to be like a little um I don't want to say narrow-minded but it's almost like they forget that there's a like a world out there yeah um and you know it's uh, like if like I mean in America is so big you know that when you grow up there like going on vacation or uh going out of town or doing something like that is usually just uh, going to Florida, a lot of people, if they can go or afford to go on vacation, they go to Florida just so they can see a beach. Um, mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people don't really think about, like, leaving the country. Um, I mean, I never did. Um, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the Navy kind of opened my eyes to, uh, you know, different things. 
um, I'm not uh, I'm not afraid to like try to move around or experience a new place or a new area or whatever. Um, uh, I think I kind of got out and now I can kind of do whatever I need to do. You know, if I want to or we want to move to Texas or Florida or wherever, you know, we can we can figure it out. And I feel like if I was in Indiana still, that would seem like something that was impossible. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. OK, thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> so uh i will just go with the next question is uh what do you think about italians but before that since you know i asked you what do you think about italy um so this is really interesting you know since you're married to an italian girl that of course it's me <laughs> um you know you dated other girls before me yeah <laughs> okay um did you find differences between you know italian women of course italian women that, that just me i hope so it's just me <laughs> compared to american girls so if you found like cultural differences can you talk about it um yeah I mean, definitely a lot of uh, a, a lot of differences. Uh, I mean, the first one that I that I immediately comes to mind is how loud you are, um, uh, especially me being um, you know kind of on the quieter side. I, I definitely in the earlier stages of us dating, there are times where I felt uh, a little awkward, uh, maybe a little self conscious being out in public with you just just because of like how loud you speak okay. uh, uh, especially being at like a, a restaurant or something and the waitress or waiter comes up and like we tell them what we you know like when you put in or tell them whatever you want to eat uh, I feel like everyone around us would kind of like start looking or uh, you know listening in especially because they hear your accent and you're kind of screaming um, uh, yeah, I mean, there's a lot of differences, and I think that's uh, one of the main reasons why, uh, you know, I've always really liked you so much. Um, uh, you're definitely really loving, really caring. Um, you've always, always, like, take care of me, uh, especially cooking and doing stuff like that. You're always trying to feed me. Um, no, I'm not done. Really yet. important for Italian women, feed feeding our men. Yeah, and then, um, I don't know, uh, I guess just like the, you know, all the stuff that we went through, you know, the deployments and everything, like that's really hard, you know, and that's hard for, for anyone, and um, I feel like there was something I was going to say, but um, <laughs> you forgot. Um, like I get what, what we're talking about, like the differences, Like, you know, like you dated other girls before me and they were all Americans. So, you know, if you think about, you know, how it was, I know now we're married and, you know, being married is different from, you know, dating someone. But, you know what I mean? Like, if you think about it, it's like, oh, Ilaria, you know, she does something different compared to my ex-girlfriend. I'm not, I'm not here to talk about your ex-girlfriend. You know what I mean? Well, so to be honest with you, this one's like that's kind of hard for me to answer because um, a lot of like the a lot of the things that I experienced with you were like uh, they were first first times for me. Um, I mean, like when you think about it, like when like we we first like started dating and stuff like. Uh, I pretty much so uh, like I had a room, you know, I was like basically renting a room and a lot of people in the Navy do this, you know, especially when they're single or, you know, they um, they get a house or something and it's usually two or three people that, uh, you know, live in a house together uh, mm -hmm. just to save money. Um, so when me and you met, I really only had like a bedroom, you know, and then like over time, 
uh, we've accumulated things and, you know, now we have a house like full of stuff. And so like that, it's kind of hard for me to say that because I never really, um, since I've joined the Navy, you know, and I feel like was more of an adult, uh, the couple of relationships that I was in were long distance, you know, so, uh, I've never lived with, you know, someone that I was dating before or, had them come over all you know all the time or Mm -hmm. like all these things um i experienced for the first time with you so Mm -hmm. um there's not really like anything for me to compare there uh that's nice not really like as like an adult um because i feel like if i were to go further back in time i just view myself as like a kid you Mm -hmm. know not really in the same type of mindset that i am as an adult yeah so that one's kind of hard to Okay, yeah. No, I I understand. Um Okay, so uh next question is stereotypes about Italy. So, as an American, we want to know because I want to know too. We we never really talk about this. Um stereotypes about Italy. If you know some, you know what Americans in general think about Italy. Feel free, you know, like you can talk about mafia because we know that you guys think mafia, uh, the godfather and pizza, pasta, whatever. So but I want to know what Americans, you know, like, you know. Well, I mean, you kind of stole what I was going to talk about. Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like... Um, that's what people think about is the mafia, uh, things like that. But, um, and pasta or spaghetti, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people would just think about like the Godfather and stuff like that. They would probably gear it more towards like the American Italian, uh, Mm -hmm. mafia or the Sopranos, you know, or things like that. Um, if you guys think about that, the first time he met me, he was like, you don't look like the girls from Jersey Shore. Oh, yeah, I forgot. Jersey, Jersey Shore. Uh, uh, gym, tan, gym Tan Laundry. Like, that's that's a bit... So Americans think that... No, people that, was, <laughs> that was a joke. That was a joke. So you don't think that Americans actually think that, you know, people that they say I'm Italian in Jersey Shore, they actually think we look like that? I would hope that they don't think that. <laughs> well, that's what you told me. Yeah, I was, I was messing with you. That was a joke. Okay. So no uh, stereotypes about Italy and Italian. No, I mean, I feel like I kind of said it already. Yeah, where is Alfredo? Yeah, Alfredo. Um, mm. no, I don't know. I know what's in my bottle. Sorry. Put it on my throat. Okay, okay, that was intense. Thank you. <clears throat> <sighs> what's next? Um, mmm. Um, so the next question, if I don't know if you have something else, do you want to talk about, uh, what do you think about Italians? Like, not about me, you know, about uh, like Italians in general, you know, like meeting my friends when you, you went to Italy, meeting my family, meeting my mom and dad, you know, my brother, you know, not just like, not just the idea about Italians, you know, just thinking about me. So, what what do I think about what do, you, what do I think about Italians? Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I have to be able to use your family. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That's. I I wanted to say not just like take an example, just you know, not just talking about me. You know, talking about all the, the Italian people you met when you were in Italy. Um, sorry, I start thinking, then I forget. So you're the, the, like my opinion or what I think, what do I think about Italians? Um, 
Uh, honestly, I think all the Italians, everyone that I've met, have been really, really great. Um, excuse I, I, me. Excuse me. Uh, I've always, um, in the beginning, you know, meeting your brother, meeting your parents, uh, I was really nervous, obviously. Uh, but I gen I genuinely get really excited and and to see your parents and your brother and uh, I actually uh, like really look forward you know to like like when we're gonna go and and be around your family. Uh, everyone there I feel like is just so uh, accepting you know I feel like everyone really accepts and and likes me I feel very welcome. Um, it's kind of hard for me to say, uh, I, and then, you know, all your friends and stuff, uh, the ones that I've met and have been around, um, everyone seems really great and really nice. And, um, you guys seem to like really enjoy catching up and being around each other. And I know I'm kind of just like off to the side cause I don't really know what, uh, what you guys are saying or anything, but, uh, um, you know, and then they, you know, they all try, uh, like their best to, you know, have conversations and, and things with me uh even if they can't speak or understand english very well um same with your family too uh like they all try you know really really hard uh mm -hmm. just to uh have conversations and things with me uh as far as just like other people you know and people we've talked to and spoke to and ran into um you know when we were sightseeing or you were taking me around i thought everyone was um helpful yeah, helpful. Uh, it makes me think of that uh, when we were trying to find, you know, uh, like a gift or a souvenir for my niece and uh, we weren't finding anything that we liked and we ended up running into that or asking that one guy uh, at that whatever shop it was. Edicola, and, edicola. Uh, yeah, and he ended up just giving us something, you know, that said uh, it's, uh, Rome, Roma on it, you know, to give to my niece and uh, I thought that was really cool. That was even more um i think uh special than finding something and buying yeah. it uh yeah um so do, so do you like the italian culture yeah like are you sorry are you happy your kids you know whenever we're gonna have kids in the future um they're gonna grow up you know half italian and they're gonna know about the italian culture yeah of course um definitely definitely like something that excites me um yeah i don't really know what else to say about that uh, okay okay thank you that was a good a good answer <laughs> so next <laughs> next question uh we went through that blah, blah, blah. um i don't know if you want to answer i don't know I, i'll tell you what they want to know um they want to know how military women you know how men treat military women you know in the military world like in your you know world um uh to be honest i don't i just from my experience uh they're you know everyone's viewed like equally um it's yeah i don't i don't know how else to say that i mean it doesn't doesn't matter you know if someone is a, a male or a female um you know in the military it it's kind of based off of your rank you know and and then obviously uh your your rate or what type of job you are um so depending on that you know and how how long they've been in the navy are they like new you know or have they been in, in like 10 years you know it kind of just depends on their uh, their experience, what platforms and stuff, uh, what areas they have experience in. But I feel like, you know, like me being the position that I'm in, if someone comes and works for me, um, I'm going to gauge, I'm going to, you know, gauge that, like how long, you know, how long have they been in the Navy? What type of experience do they have? Uh, and then depending on their rank, you know, you kind of expect, uh, you expect, more out of like some people than others you know like if someone just came in the navy i'm not going to task them with doing something that you know they they're not ready to know how to do or ready to learn um you know and if it's someone who is 
like me, you know, or whatever that's been in like almost 10 years at, at that point, you know, like it's like, Hey, do you know how to do this? And if they don't, you know, it's like, all right, well, I can show you and I can help you if you need some help. And, uh, at that point you're just kind of expected to figure it out. And, uh, mm -hmm. but, it, but if it was someone who joined the Navy like a week ago, I'm not going to expect, you know, I'm not going to. So you're talking about men or women? I'm talking about both because it doesn't matter. Okay. So you're trying to say that there's no like a sp special treatment for women. That like men and women in the military are the same. Yeah, I mean, yeah, as far as like the job that you come to work to perform, I mean, yeah. I mean, yeah, there's obviously some uh some differences, you know. Um mm -hmm like between like males and females and stuff like that uh but no i mean as far as like joining the navy and coming to work and doing your job uh mm -hmm. uh there's no yeah i mean you just kind of everyone's the same okay there's no like discrimination okay okay thank you um next next question um what do you think about long distance relationship you know like you experienced that with me and you experienced that you said that you know your ex-girlfriends were most of them long distance relationships um so what do you think about long distance and how to manage you know being in a long distance relationship you can take an like an example you can take like the example of our you know relationship before getting married what we have to go through um honestly i think long distance relationships are extremely uh they're extremely hard um i feel like uh it may be a little easier if you're you know if you're busy and and stuff uh i mean in my situation uh being on a being on deployment um you know, whether you are, that doesn't, that would have been long distance r regardless of wherever you were, mm -hmm. uh, in Italy or in America, you know, I was still gone for seven months. Um, it, I don't know. It's, it's never something that, uh, like I've wanted to be in. I never, I've never wanted to be in a long distance relationship. It's just something that's kind of happened. And then you, you try to make the best of it. Um, definitely don't like it it's hard um but i mean like it will it will test your test your relationship and um you know if it's strong enough you'll get through it and if it's not you won't mm -hmm. so okay um do you have any you know like advice tips you know to people experiencing long distance relationships um, I have a lot of Italian, you know, uh, girls, you know, followers uh, that they text me every day and they're like, I've been dating uh, an army guy, Navy guy, you know, people in the military that are in Italy and now they live in, in the U.S. or they're on deployment. Um, you know what I mean? Um, I guess uh, for advice... Um I don't know. I guess just be smart, be careful. I mean, it's really hard. Uh, there's not, you know, any, any, any real way around it. Um, if like something doesn't feel right or whatever, you know, don't waste your time on it, you know, because it's, uh, it's a really hard thing to do and realistically the chances of it like working out are kind of slim and I, I don't, I don't mean to be negative, but even when you look back at, you know, our relationship timeline, it had a million opportunities to fail. Um, and we just happened to make it through it. But um, I don't know, I would just be aware of that, you know, especially their age. You know, I would say like, I don't know, anyone under the age of 25, like if they don't really seem into it and they're not too serious, don't waste your time on it, you know. Um, because uh, the chances of it, you know, ending badly are honestly probably kind of high, you know, or just not working out. And I don't know. I would just say uh, I'd, I'd be smart about it and 
uh, like listen to your gut, you know, if it doesn't feel right, don't waste your time on it. Um, because it's not easy. And even if, uh, you know, you tried to, uh, pursue like a future together, it, it's not easy, you know, um, especially coming to America, America is not Italy, you know, and that's something that, you know, you'll, you'll struggle with, uh, you know, it's, um, it's something that me and me and Alaria struggle with, you know, like she misses Italy a lot. And, uh, um, I don't know, it was just things like that stuff that we didn't, you know, really think about a lot in the beginning, you know, you just want to be together. Um, but yeah, after a while, you get used to being together, and you know, and you kind of miss home. Mm-hmm. You gonna say something? Yeah. Uh, um. You know, most of the time, you know, that that's what I was talking about a couple of nights ago. Some of my followers, you know, they asked me the same thing. You know, they were like, "I found you on TikTok. I found you on Instagram, and I'm going through." you know, the green card process that you cannot leave America. Do you remember how hard it was? Um, And, you know, just feeling, you know, like trapped, feeling like there's no escape. And they asked me, how do you manage that? You know, how do you uh, deal with something like that? And what I answer is like, you, you don't, you know, like, it's so hard um, when you, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if you're like 20 or you're 30, you know, I moved to America to be an au pair when I was 24 and now I'm 30 and me and you, you know, like we met in 2019 and, you know, all the thing that we went through, blah, blah, blah. But, you know, at the end of the story, I lived my entire life in Italy. You know, that's my culture. Uh, living in another country, speaking a different language, uh, having to deal with different, you know, habits and, you know, people that they live their lives completely different from yours because no matter what people say, American Italian cultures are so far away from each other and it's hard, it's hard. So, when you make the decision, you know, like I, I love Dylan, I love my husband, uh, you know, like uh, he's, he's, you know, he's my life, he's my husband, I, I wouldn't marry him if I was not in love with him, but... Aww. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> but um, this is gonna make me cry. But, you know, I miss Italy, you, you know, like I miss my family, I miss my friends, I miss you know, everything, and it's hard, it's hard, and, you know, my husband is, is the only friend, friend I have, is like when you're 30 years old, no matter how, you know, outgoing you are, because I'm really outgoing, you know, I talk to everyone, I have no problems, you know, opening to people, but it's hard, you know, like, finding new friends, new people, um, that they're gonna accept you, no matter what, and, you know, I, at the end of the story, you are Italian. You're not American. You you got an accent. No matter how good your English is, um, they always gonna look at you like in a. You know what I mean? Like, do you agree? Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So um, before making this, what I wanna say is before making this decision, think about it. Like. Me and Dylan, you know, we were so in love and, you know, like both of us, I hope he was in love as much as I was. Um, But, you know, we didn't really like personally, I didn't really think about that. I, I I was just so in love with him, you know, after what we had to go through and I just wanted to be with him. And, you know, like when you have a long distance relationship and you're from another country if you want to be with someone American in particular, marriage is the only way. You know, you have to marry him. You have to go through the process. You have to get your green card if you want to live in America. You know, like, so you don't really think, you know, at the consequen- consequences. Is it consequences? Consequences. Okay, I said it right. Um, 
so yeah again like i love my husband i love dylan but i miss i miss italy every day um i miss my family i, I miss my dog miele hi miele if you're watching this with my mom and you know i miss my friends i have so many friends in italy i have my best friends I've, I've i've known my friends my best friends since i was like three years old you know some of them and it's just like heartbreaking when you f you see other people you know growing up and um living their lives you know like people that you know you have known your entire life starting to getting married because they're all my age you know 30 years old and getting married having kids graduations um i don't know like birthdays you know like my parents you know like my parents like getting older and it's it's just hard it's just like you're not there you're not there because you can choose one one event a year you cannot afford to go to italy every month you know like oh it's my it's uh, my best friend's birthday i'm gonna fly to italy oh it's my mom's birthday i'm gonna fly no you cannot do that i mean if you're a millionaire but we're not so um so my my advice for you is think about this because no matter how much you love the person like you're gonna have consequences you gonna experience um you know like loneliness um you're gonna have you know like you're gonna have to make hard decisions and it's not easy that's that's what i wanted to say but sorry that was like kind of like <laughs> <laughs> just me talking uh, I'm just so used to like having like doing this podcast without you know people sitting next to me so for me it's like you know talking and talking whatever you know I like to talk but so uh, we have other um, two questions so this is like okay so this is everyone everyone is so curious oh my god everyone wants to know our loves you know because they always hear it from me and they want to hear our love story from your point of view that's something that everyone wants to know it's just like you know on my social media on my videos they're always like we want to know what dylan think about you we want to know what what was like uh, what was the first thing dylan you know thought when he met you and blah 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 but unfortunately we sign a contract and that i cannot say what it is um but what, what do you want to say um Uh, I guess without without saying too much or like revealing anything, uh, the first time that I seen you, um, I thought you were absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> and uh, thank you. That's like kind of embarrassing. Thank you. Uh, and I was just so excited to try to get to know you. And I'm so glad that I did. Mm. Th <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's like, it's so weird. Like, I don't know if you feel the same. Me and you, we've been knowing each other for four years. Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like so weird. Like, I still like, you know, even if we're married and, you know, we had a long distance and everything and we were kind of like friends and I had to listen to Dylan talking about, you know, it's like depression and for, I don't want, I'm not making fun of you, of course, like, you know, when you had to go through depression, you know, what I'm talking about, we're not going to say that again, but Dylan knows what I'm talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes you know like me and dylan we were like we, we were like best friends and friends uh, couple husband and wife it's just still like i feel like you know i, I feel like 
sometimes like I'm embarrassed when Dylan is like, you know, I think you're pretty. I think you're when it is still you you tell you tell me that I'm pretty, I'm beautiful, I'm gorge gorgeous. <laughs> it's just like I still feel like butterflies in my stomach, you know, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, okay, perfect. Thank you. Thank you. That was that was enough. Um what else? Oh, 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 okay. Last question. Uh I think we can we went through everything. Da -da -da -da. Yes. Okay, so question is and you have to be honest. <laughs> Would you move to Italy? Would you move to Italy? Uh, yes, I would move to Italy. Um, I don't know about right now, you know, but it's definitely uh, like an option. You know, it's it's not something that uh, I would ever rule out. Um, uh, we've talked about it. We've talked about it before and, and stuff. And I just I don't think it's the best move right now. You know, I'm kind of. Uh, um, I mean right now you're stuck with the military for yeah i mean i'm obviously like still in the military but you know even if i got out you know i'm still kind of like in my prime um you know of working and uh i've put a lot of time and um everything into what i've learned in my experience and i i think i still um i'm in a position you know to grow a lot more and uh potentially make you know a lot better money and um, I kind of just want, you know, want to explore that uh, mm -hmm. before, you know, making, you know, a, a life changing, you know, decision like that. Um, but um, definitely something that, you know, um, I would do. Mm -hmm. um, it's oh. something we've talked about. And honestly, I think it'll probably happen one day. I just it's hard to say right now when. Mm -hmm. um. So does it make you feel excited, you know, like moving to Italy, um, you know, experiencing uh, the Italian culture, um, you know, 360 gradi, 360 degrees, I don't know how you guys say. Um, and like thinking that, you know, my parents going to be grandparents and, you know, they're going to teach our kids you know the italian culture and being you know italian grandparents nonni nonna nonno you're making it hard i don't know you're kind of not giving me a question <laughs> like if are you, if you're excited you know thinking that our kids gonna experience the italian culture yeah i mean of course that's like that's exciting um especially um, I don't want to say that I don't think America has a culture. I think um, in America, it just depends on where you live, um, where you grew up, what type of, you know, culture, mm -hmm. you, you know, you might be exposed to or or have or your family. Um, so, yeah, I don't I don't really feel like where I'm from or, you know, me in general. I don't feel like I really have like a culture um, besides like, I guess, your basic American um, so yeah, I mean, like, uh, that's definitely exciting. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I view it as like, um, like going to Italy, I view it as like almost more of like a retirement thing, like not saying like going there when we're old, but I feel like if I'm going to go to Italy, uh, like, I don't know, I, I view it as more of like a retirement or something, you know, cause I don't know how much I would be able to work or what I would be able to do. I don't know how my skills would transfer over, mm -hmm. you know, I'd feel like I would um, not be able to really do the same things in Italy as I mm -hmm. would here, obviously job wise and especially not being fluent in an, in Italian. Mm -hmm. um, so if I did, if we did go to Italy, I don't know, know uh, um, how good I would be. Yeah, so uh, me and Dylan, we, we talk about it, um, you know, like moving to Italy and 
Dylan, you know, is scared that he doesn't speak Italian and he's not gonna, you know, find a job and, you know, he's not gonna, um, he's not gonna be able to provide for the family. Like, you know, right now Dylan is providing for me, um, most of the time, you know, I help, I, I help him, you know, um, here and there, you know, like getting groceries and, you know, like if I, if I can pay for something, I, I just do it. Uh, but he provides, you know, for everything, and that everyone knows that in America is really, really expensive. Um, so of course, for him, you know, like I, know, I mean, what you always tell me is like, you are the man. I don't know what I always tell you. <laughs> that you, you as a man, you want to feel like. Oh yeah, I mean, like as a as as a man, like I feel like. Uh, I have that, uh, that I, I feel like it's my job to provide mm -hmm. and that scares me, you know, moving to Italy and not being able to provide, uh, and I'm afraid of, you know, feeling that way. Even if, um, I tell him all the time that we are in 2024 and, you know, I can work, you know, I can work too. Like right now I'm, I'm working with social media, you know. I'm not making that much money, but, you know, we split a lot of things, you know, like money talking, talking. Mm, you know, I buy a grocery store that most of the time is like $250, you know, I, I pay for whatever I want to buy, you know, I never ask him for money if I want to buy a dress, if I want to buy shoes, if I want to buy clothes, you know, Dylan for now is providing for, you know, paying our mortgage and like paying bills. And, you know, but we try to balance because for me, it's really important that a woman has to be independent and doesn't have to, everything doesn't have to be around, you know, like uh, a man and, you know, men. But Dylan, you know, we have different point of view. Dylan, uh, you know, he feels like more that uh, he needs to provide for the family and nothing, you know, nothing bad about that. Um, everyone has their point of view, you know, right? See. See. Uh but yeah. Um okay. So we went through uh, these ten questions. Um I feel like Dylan was really um how you, how how we wanna say it? Uh probably monotone. Uh probably didn't show too much uh expression. <laughs> um Yeah, that's how Dylan is. It's kinda you know, we are the opposite. Like, there's Ilaria and there's Dylan. Two different people, right? Right. Uh, I do feel bad that we didn't write down the names of the people who did have questions so we could say, like, so-and-so <laughs> asked this question. Next time we'll do that. Yeah, so Dylan uh, keeps telling me, why you didn't write down, you know, the name of the people that, you know, they they tell they told you to, you know, talk about this question, blah, blah, blah. They asked, you know, and I'm like, I don't know, because, you know, I put, you know, all together, you know, I tried to put all together all the things that people ask me. So I try, you know, like to get different questions in one question and. Um, it's, you know, I tried my, my best, but, um, yeah, that was really interesting. Uh, thank you for your point of view. Thank you for opening up to my followers. You know, they're always like curious about you and they want to know, they always ask me why Dylan is really shy. Why Dylan never talks, why Dylan never opens up. Well, you want to say something before closing uh, the episode? um yeah sorry about that i just uh i guess i just don't really like being on camera um uh, i don't know i'm kind of shy so uh, i feel like it kind of takes me out of my element a little bit to be recorded and um uh, things like that um but he's doing better uh right you kind of opening up more before like compare you know a long time ago like two years ago whatever when i was I was making, you know, content and you, you, you're getting better. I mean, no, 
Yeah, no, I, I think I'm getting better at it. Uh, I'm getting a, a little more used to it. Um, like it's fun because it's funny because um, what you see, you know, when we make those videos and Dylan is like, you know, like that, that's the real Dylan. Like everyone, everyone think, you know, that everyone thinks that he's kind of like an ass, <laughs> but he's not. Uh, yeah, I'm just quiet. Um, I don't know. I do, I do like, really fun. I do behind the scenes stuff. I give you ideas and stuff like that. And I try to help you in different ways. Like the, the voicemail thing that I want you to set, get set up. So yeah, people, uh, yeah. So people can actually, uh, call and like leave you voicemails and ask you questions and then you can play them on here. So, uh, you know, some of your fans and followers can have that opportunity to have their voice, uh, heard as well. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, it'd be a little bit more connecting. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. I, I want to absolutely do that. Uh, but yeah, um, at the end, like, you know, Dylan is like a, a really nice guy. Um, he, Oh. <laughs> I think they can probably hear me when I do that, even when they're holding it. <laughs> but, you know, like, uh, I just like closing up this episode, say three things about you that, you know, th that describe yourself. Three things that describe myself? Yeah, like uh, um, how you are. Um... I don't know. I think I have a very, uh, like rich inner personality. I think like once, uh, I let, you know, people in and, you know, and they, they actually get to see like the real side of me. Uh, I think I'm fun to be around, uh, probably never going to be that way in front of a camera, but, uh, <laughs> you do uh, sometimes, um, it happens sometimes. I don't know. Three things about myself. Yeah. Like the last one. I mean, I didn't really, I only said one. Uh, I don't know. I'm really quiet. Um, do, do you think you're a good looking guy? Um, I don't think I'm like the worst looking guy. I don't know. I, I try to be uh, humble. I try to be humble, I guess. I don't know. Honesto. Well, that was honest. My honest reaction. Okay, okay. Um, so we are at the end of this episode and <laughs> I want to thank you so much, my husband, to be here with me. Thank you for your idea. Everyone, you know, everyone was obsessed when I told them, you know, Dylan want to wanna be part of my podcast. He wants to be part of the episode and... You know, you want to answer questions from you guys. And I think they, um, this, you know, it worked out really good. Yeah, I think it went good. And if it does do good, we can do it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, people, people are like, oh, it doesn't, it, one episode is not enough. They want more. So, yeah, I definitely am okay with that. Perfect. Okay. okay so that, oh. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you, Dylan Huey, um, a.k.a. my husband. Um, and grazie, grazie a tutti per aver guardato questo nuovo episodio di Keeping Up with Yaya Rondi. You can follow me on YouTube, Instagram, uh, TikTok, Spotify, <laughs> Apple Podcasts, and I am Yaya Rondi, I-A-I-A-R-O-N-D-I. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. <laughs> <laughs>